Welcome back. Nigeria's energy sector is said to have recorded an inspiring start to the new year, building up on the momentum witnessed in infrastructure uh, investment in the sector in 2017. And so from electricity to oil and gas, what does 2018 hold for this sector? I'm being joined by an energy sector expert and an oil and gas lawyer, Mr. George Itomi. Good morning, Mr. Itomi. Good morning, you very much for joining us. Good to see you. Right. In your January 2018 energy report, you did indicate there that Nigeria's energy sector is looking pretty good. Yeah. How started, and started, why? started off on a very mm -hmm. bright note. Um, there are lots of things um, going on, and as you said, from the power sector, the power sector recovery program is in full gear and has been reported a number of times. Um, generation, generating capacity has gone up to, up to 7,000 uh, megawatts. Um, wheeling capacity, that's a transmission too, um, uh, is reported to be also 7,000. Um, we're not too sure about that because we still have uh, grid collapses. But nevertheless, there's been a significant uh, improvement on that. Um, there are issues to do with distribution and with the declaration of the eligible customer, um, uh, the eligible customer declaration. There's going to be more activity in the sector. So the distribution companies, uh, I believe, will be working with the regulator to see how uh, all these efforts can be integrated to mean more power to uh, consumers, which is really what we want. And I'm sure you can bear with me that there's been a general improvement in power supply. Even except, though some people are still complaining that they're yeah, not seeing the light. There will be complaints. As I told you, we've had uh, a number of grid collapses. Uh, it's come principally from gas shortages. Uh, some of these things you can't totally control. So we're hoping that we can <clears throat> backward deal with issues to do with unrest in the Niger Delta, um, issues to do with uh, non-payment for gas. Um, the um, part of what has happened is that the power assurance fund is meant to pay the GENCOs who in turn should be able to pay the gas suppliers. We still have a little bit of those issues and I know the GENCOs are complaining that they are being weighed down by nearly 600 billion Naira in debt. So once those are addressed, we can begin to see uh, hope liquidity will return to the sector, which is actually what we need. But in terms of activity, there's quite a lot of activity in that sector. And it's not just limited to the federal government. We're seeing state governments also stepping up to, uh, into the fray. We've seen um, Ogun State, Light Up Ogun, significantly Lagos State as well. And Lagos State have been on theirs and has actually backed it up by legislation, uh, mm -hmm. one of the seven uh, pieces of legislation signed by the governor last week. Uh, that's going to see a flurry of activities. And it is good to see that state governments are beginning to understand that they have a significant role to play in the power equation, not just net leaving it uh, all to the federal government. Now, for example, with the Lagos one, I know Lagos State is actively engaging all the stakeholders within the power sector, including the two major discos, Ikeja and Echo, that serve them. And the whole idea is that we can get to a point where you can bridge the funding gap through ingenious instruments. Because once that liquidity issue is addressed, then investments will come in. And Lagos is basically carving out a niche for, for itself. Because um, <clears throat> when I was with the, um, the governor spoke about his vision and what he was looking at, very forward looking, was to the effect that if he gets power to Lagosians, then there will be more economic activity. And so he will have a full reason to tax people. That's mm. very forward thinking. And really, that's the way most of these issues should be addressed. So if Lagos gets it right, I know many other states will do so. Aquai Bomb 2 is also on the generating track as well. They recently signed um, a 570 megawatt generating plant. Uh, it's a joint venture uh, um, with Dangote and some of these other groups. Um, Edo too, and then the Azura plant is coming on. Um, in fact, it, it's supposed to add a complement of 450 megawatts to the national grid. They have a PRG, a payment guarantee, 
so which means that the um, Edo will get a bit of part of the power. So hopefully that should deal with some of the issues the state requires to ease its uh, power situation. But significantly, most of it will go to the grid, and it will boost supply. So as you can see, there's still a lot of work to be done. But at least I can say we are now on track. I just hope that the issue to do with uh, distribution can be addressed holistically, because up to this point, the distribution companies have been isolated from most of these arrangements. But last week, I know there are now discussions going on, because you need to get all the sector players, because it's one machine that must work uh, in harmony. You, you did mention gas as um, a major challenge. Sure. Now, how has the gas policy, I mean, so far in the terms gas, of helping the gas policy, the, you see, one of the major issues with gas is also the pricing. Because the pricing fixed by the federal government is at variance with what you might call the international benchmark for gas. Again, like with power, you're not seeing those investors flood to that sector. And once you have, because each, any time you have a differential, for example, the uh, grid power, the gas that supplies power to the grid, is priced at about $3.30. In general, in, uh, international benchmark, is around about $7. Any time you see this, that sort of a mismatch, it shakes in investor confidence. And there's a lot of investment to do in the gas sector, especially gas to power. So hopefully, um, part of this power sector recovery program, this time working with the... Um, uh, energy ministry because that's where they control the gas and coal. We can have some sort of synergy that will address the issue to do with the gas supply because we need it. Gas is a feedstock for the thermal plants and thermal plants supply about two-thirds of our energy needs today in Nigeria. So we need to look at it holistically. I know of great concern to the federal government is if they don't put a lead on prices then the end product, which is electricity to consumers, may come at a very high price. And not only will they pay a political price for it, it will burn the pockets of consumers. So between um, that concern and the need to get this sector up and running, I think we should find an agreeable middle. And this is what this entire past sector recovery program is addressing. And I'm very confident we're on the right track. We're still smoothing out the rough edges but it's starting on a very good note.